<laughs> well, there's another there's another interesting thing that somebody somebody pointed out to me on my journey from being a a war hawk to somebody who actually doesn't believe in killing people. And they pointed out that if you look at uh, videos of rallies um, in downtown Baghdad with Saddam Hussein, um, there will be hundreds of thousands of people in the street. And Saddam will be sitting on top of a Jeep out in the open air. And there's thousands of people waving AK-47s in the air and shooting them into the air, right? Celebrating whatever. Nobody's pointing their AK-47 at him. And all it would take is one guy. Right? If they wanted to free themselves from the guy, everybody was armed. They were more well-armed before the U.S. went in. The U.S. says they can only have one uh, rifle per household. People there were far better armed before the U.S. went in under this, this dictator. And nobody took him out. Right? Nobody shot him. One bullet could end the whole thing. Nobody shot the guy. And here in the United States where we have a free society, the president rides around in a bulletproof motorcade and the CIA goes ahead of him and and cleanses the populace of any weapons they might have. And so who's who's the free society? Who is uh you know, who's living under a leader who they who they support? I mean and I don't know the answer to that, right? That was just a question that somebody raised and it it was something I couldn't answer. Yeah. See, and that and that's part of the thing that we do here on this show on Patriots Lament. We are not trying to make people into peaceniks. We're not trying to make people into capitalists. We are not trying to make people into war hawks. We are trying to get you to think for yourself and stop regurgitating party talking points from whatever political party you may have been raised in or whatever media outsource you have been brainwashed by. That's all we're trying to get you to do is just think about it. Do a little reading on your own. Golly, i make my head explode. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Uh, hello. Hey, hello. Uh, this is Liz Sanders. Good morning. So I just wanted to talk about U.S. foreign policy a little bit. There's two things I think Americans should do. One is they should read. The other is they should spend some time overseas. I spent eight years living in an Asian country, and trying to defend U.S. foreign policy is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And we, we preach democracy, but our CIA is well known for overthrowing democracy. Most people remember the 1979 um, Iran incident when these students took control of a U.S. embassy. But what they don't remember is the CIA overthrew a democratically elected government in 1953. The CIA overthrew um, another democratically elected government in 1954 in Guatemala, 1961 in Ecuador, 1963 in the Dominican Republic. 1964 Brazil, 1965 Indonesia, and on and on and on. So, so this idea that we're uh, spreading democracy is, is actually it's just a lie. You can look at the history of the CIA. That's all you have to do is read up the history of the CIA, and you'll see that we support dictators and we uh, overthrow democracy. So it's it's hypocrisy. Well, it's only it's, a good democracy if we're the ones that set it up. Exactly. Yeah. Well, what happens is when you talk to people about this, they say, well. If we invaded them, it must not have been a true democracy. So by definition, the United States doesn't invade democracy. Because if you invaded a democracy, it must not have been a democracy. That, you know what? You just did a very eloquent job of completely eroding every argument for American foreign policy that I've heard in the last 20 years. Thank you, sir. I appreciate no that. 458-TALK is the number. You've got it on Patriot's Lament, and uh, you are next on the air. Who's this? Yes, hello. Good morning. Who is this? This is Gary. How do you Good do? morning, Gary. I'm doing very well. Thank you for calling. What's on your mind today? Okay. I've been in, going to a lot of meetings, both these and ours, quite a bit of time, listening to what's coming out. And have the borough assembly candidates been looking at Prop 2 at all? Healthy Air Initiative? Prop 2, Healthy Air Initiative. This is the another attempt by our neighbors to restrict what we can burn, right? Well, I've attended some meetings, and if you go to www.healthyairnow.org, they're now posting pictures of people with boilers in their yards. Yep, I heard about that. And I actually attended one of the meetings there, and I made an issue specifying that, look, even if I agreed with your issue with the Healthy Air, which I don't, I'm really against them posting people's property on the internet and even the values of properties. Well, it's not it's, it's not an the invasion people's of privacy. property though. The the borough owns it. Well, no, that's I, even beside the point. The, yeah. My point is now they're putting me up for great. I see a guy with a nice piece of property. I have a guy I can find out now where he lives. I know he's worth a lot of bucks. So now I can target him if I'm a burglar or even a lawyer. This guy's got assets. Well, absolutely. I mean, what have we come to? What have we come to? We're putting up initiatives to pound our neighbors. 
why are we doing this to ourselves? We're not supposed to be against each other. Well, I, I, uh, be... I basically include you as this person. I'm saying you, you're a very bad neighbor. That's what I essentially said. <laughs> and I was trying to be nice, and she accused me of basically doing the same thing because I'm evidently polluting people's lungs, which I personally am not. Well, and who who wants to? I have never met anyone that says, you know what? I want to pollute my neighbor. <laughs> I've never met anyone that says, you know, I wish the air was more dirty. And I've on the other side of the issue, just another point of relevance, is that uh, they say we don't want to get EPA involved. We want to do it ourselves under local control, and that's why they want this to go forward. But on the same side, they say we don't like existing outside boilers because they don't do that in Washington State. Right. Okay, and I'm going, that does not balance. Well, the the only reason that we're having the discussion, anyways, is because of the EPA. I mean, if we if we don't want EPA control, then tell them to get lost. That's the easy way to end it. I mean, the air is no different now than I mean, we've heard Steve say this ten exactly, years ago. It's actually cleaner years ago. now than it was ten years ago. Right, um, and they're but, saying but not, and showing graphs that it is worse. You know, what they've done is that they have lowered the standard. They are or raised the standard, whichever it is. They've made the they they've made the particulate levels more strict. We are actually, we've got cleaner air than we did 10 years ago. I moved here 17 years ago. Air is better now than it was then. It has been, it, it is scientifically provable that the air is better now than it was then. The difference is that they've changed the standard on us. Even if we do bow down and kiss the feet that are kicking us right now, and we accept these new standards, and we do everything we possibly can to meet them, what's the guarantee that they're not going to change well, the standards look, next week? Well, look forward to a large ad coming out in the paper, probably a $3,000 buy of people supporting Prop 2 with a lot of names, including maybe some of your opposing candidates. So Good. that's something looking forward to you. Well, I mean, I would just, for one, encourage everyone to vote against it. If you got a problem with your neighbor, go talk to them. we got to get back to being good neighbors. Well, they're, they're saying, yeah, yeah, we've tried that. It's not working with a few particular individuals. And they even say the DEC has said we only have one lawyer on staff, and they're only going to pursue one complaint a year. Well, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad. glad. What well, and if they only, they only hey, you know what? If they only pursued one complaint a year, that would give the rest of us an opportunity to raise money to help in the defense of that one person a year that's being targeted for. And and that's another thing about liberty. We can only re- maintain our own liberties if we help defend the liberties of our neighbors. And instead, what we are doing is we are restricting the liberties of our neighbors. What is going on? Well, see, I'm all for healthy air. I really am. I'm really not out to poison my neighbor. And if my neighbor knocks on my door and says I'm doing something wrong, I'll probably listen attentively and say, let's find a way to correct it. It's, it's what happens, though, when we let outside influence dictate what we're going to do. We have a power plant not being used. We have a copper mine that's not being touched. I mean, look at look at their, the anti-copper mine ad. They say the issue is as clear as the waters of Bristol Bay. Well, I've been to Bristol Bay, and you can't <laughs> even see an inch into the water, so they've definitely never been there. Yeah, we a commercial fish in Bristol Bay for five years. The water's... Because of the tides, it's, it's black. You literally, at any time, could never see more than an inch into the water. Well, all I'd say, I would counsel people, if they have boilers in their yards, go look at that website and see if they feel they've been negatively impacted. All right. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the phone call. We have got about a minute here before we go. I know we've got other folks on the line. We're not going to be able to get to you today. Uh, action point for today, gentlemen. What is the one thing we want people to walk away from after today's show and put into practice something that we can do today. I think we said it another show, but get to know your neighbor. I mean, I'm even guilty of that, but if you got a problem with someone, go talk to them. Start there. we got to take this power grab that the borough has and stop it. You know, here's one of the issues, though. You just said to get to know your neighbor. You know, what about before you have a problem with your neighbor? Head on yeah. over there and get to know your neighbor now, so that if a problem rate comes up, it's not going to be a big deal. It'll be a, it'll be a couple of buddies selling it and settling it over the backyard fence instead of. I'm gonna sue you, you son of a gun! You, you get your smoke coming into my yard, and you, you, your apples falling under my tree. You, you, can, you, you know, kids. Well, if people don't get it figured out. They're gonna figure it out because the more and more every day people are leaving this town, and it's because of. That building across the road, people restricting our rights, people restricting, putting regulations on us. Website, patriotslament.blogspot.com. There's three videos up there. I'd encourage everybody to watch them this weekend. See you next week.